Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many enter through it, but small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. I am Pastor Bridget Ogbefo, inviting you to join me every Friday at 6 a.m. on the Tobago Inspirational Network for Gateway to Life, where we explore the Word of God through the help of the Spirit of God. I bring you greetings in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I am Pastor Bridget of Bifon, and this is Gateway to Life on TIN. And I'm trusting God for an awesome time in His presence, even with His words dished out to us through the Spirit of God. I want us to pray wherever you are. Just join me as we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this beautiful day that you have made that I'm so glad to be part of. Thank you for as many as are watching me right now or hearing the sound of my voice because you have allowed us all to be amongst the living, to be in the land of the living this morning, this afternoon, this night, wherever, whatever time it may be that all these people watching may be watching from. Father, I give you thanks and I say, Thank you for not allowing the wish of the enemy to prevail over our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for your word that is coming forth at this moment. Sweet Holy Spirit, I ask that you will have your way. You will take charge. You will do what you alone can do in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for Tobago Inspirational Network for what you are doing with this awesome establishment, for what you are doing through them, for what you are doing with them. Father, I ask, oh God, that you will continue to herald the gospel through this awesome set of people in the mighty name of Jesus, that no weapon formed, fashioned against them shall prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. Above all, this word that is about to go out, that it will touch a life, it will set a soul free, it will open people's eyes in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Again, you are welcome to Gateway to Life. And so this morning, we want to, by the grace of God, conclude what we started last week, I believe, that was titled, Beware of Wolves. Beware of Wolves. I want us to quickly look at the scripture again. We took our main scriptures from Matthew chapter 7, from verse 15, and I want to read it again. Look at what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 7, and verse 15. That's Matthew chapter 7 and verse 15. It says, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You shall know them by their fruit. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. But a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Look at verse 22. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess... Unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that walk in iniquity. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon the house, and it fell not. For it was founded upon a rock. 
And everyone that heareth the sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand and the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell and great was the fall of it. Beware of wolves. And as I was just reading through these scriptures now, something dropped in my spirit. Did you notice that the man that built his house upon the rock was exposed to the same conditions as the man that built his house on the sand? The man that built his house on the rock, the Bible says, the rain came, the flood came, and the wind blew, and the house did not move. There was no consideration for the man that built his house on the sand. To say, well, you know, his house is on the sand, so you know, do, don't let the rain come. Well, you could allow a little wind blow, you know, because the same condition. What does that tell you? Ignorance is not an excuse. Your own preparedness is not an excuse. The fact that you are not rooted and grounded in the world is not an excuse for you not to be ravaged by the wolves of life. They will still come at you with the same velocity. And so I'm saying to you today, beware of wolves. And so last week, we went on to talk about, you know, what wolves re represent. Right from the scriptures we read, the Bible is self-explanatory, like I would have said the last time. It made us to know that wolves could mean false prophet. And I remember that I told us the last time, false prophet does not, uh, not only mean those who carry that title of a prophet. There could be wolves in families. There could be wolves amidst your friends. And I remember establishing the fact that wolves represent things that are fake, things that are not genuine, things that are deceptive. Hallelujah. And so today, without uh, much ado, I want to go straight into the characteristics of wolves. Because that scripture where we read, the Bible says, for by their fruit ye shall know them. Look at verse 20 of that same scriptures, Matthew chapter 7. It says, wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. That is after the Bible described to us that a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. So that is settled by God. Then he now said, are you confused looking at the tree to know what kind of tree it is? Are you confused looking at people you don't know who is a wolf or who is a sheep? Bible says, wherefore? <laughs> uh, by their fruit, you shall know them. So today we want to look at the fruits of wolves, the characteristics of wolves, the exhibition of wolves, the things that wolves, that you sense from them when you see them. Hallelujah. There are numerous characteristic of wolves but you know when you seek God, God is multifaceted what you see when you seek God concerning a topic might be different from the angle that I will see it from but one thing that stands there is no confusion even in God there is no confusion in Christ Jesus every where you see it from there will always be that unifying for that thing that unites everything together so the word of god is one and same hallelujah characteristic of wolves don't forget i mentioned it last time that wolves they are enemies to sheep why because they feed on them the wolf will gladly want to attack on any um sheep that strays away and what do they do the bible records records that they are they are ravening they will they will tear the sheep apart and feed on the sheep. Wicked people, false people, false prophets, 
They are the ones that you call wolves. Before I go further into the characteristics, let's look at what Luke chapter 10 and verse 3 says. Luke chapter 10 and verse 3 says, Go your ways, behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. I send you forth as lambs among wolves. I send you forth for your eyes to be open, to spot out people that are antichrist, people that are not caught out for the will of God. So what do wolves do? Number one, wolves many a times appear to mean well. A wolf will not always come to you, I'm a wolf, no. They come looking harmless. They come looking nice. They come looking interested in your well-being. They come in disguise in any shape or form. They come like they have the truth in them. They creep in subtly, almost unnoticed. That is how wolves behave. They don't come scaring you. You know where I come from? There is a proverbial statement that we always make. They said, if you want to catch a monkey, you must behave like a monkey. And that's what wolves do. They come pretending. They study you. They know the language you understand. They know the things that entice you. They know the things that you want to hear. So they come subtly. Pretending to be in your corner. When in truth and in fact, they are out to destroy you. Look at what the Bible says in Jude. Jude is just one chapter. Look at what uh, verse, 40, verse, verse 4 says, Jude. It says, for there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Ungodly men turning the grace of God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says that they creep in on our ways. It says they are ungodly people. So number one characteristics of wolves, they come in on our way. They come in unassuming. They come in like they, have, they mean well for you. But their original intention in to cause havoc is to cause destruction. You have many of them in your place of work. I don't know who is watching me right now. They come in wolves in sheep clothing. They may be your co-workers. They know things you will do that will get you into trouble. These wolves come around and say, why don't you do it this way now? They push you into doing the things and they are the first who run to the senior management to report you. They are the first one who will kick against you. Wolves! It is safe to call them backstabbers sometimes. So characteristic of wolves, good percentage of the time, they don't come out showing themselves as wolves. In other words, they would have entered into you, perpetuated their evil before you recognize that they actually came in to cause destruction. So that's it, wolves based on Jude chapter, uh, verse 4, it says that they creep in on our And it says they are ungodly men. It says they turn the grace of God into lasciviousness and deny God in their actions and in their words. Number two, wolves, they conceal their original agenda until they have gotten a hold of you. They are very good at masking their intentions. They are very good at masking, you know, they, they are very good at masking their, their, their plans. We read of a story in the Bible. <laughs> ah, the story of Haman. Hallelujah, but time will not permit us to go into that. Haman didn't know 
that the intention was to celebrate a Mordecai. He thought he was he. When they came to me and they, they, to him, they, cast, they, they asked him a question. They said, what do you think the king should do to the man that he so, you know, desires to honor? And he, man, he began to project all these things. <laughs> I will put my robe on that man. I'm paraphrasing. I will put my ring on his finger. I will do this and I will do Because he thought it was him that was going to be celebrated. But little did he know it was not him. And when he knew, what did he do? Go and read up the story for yourself. So they conceal their original agenda until they have gotten hold of you. Let's see what Second Peter chapter 2 says. Hallelujah. Second Peter chapter 2, we're talking about the characteristics of wolves. Second Peter chapter 2 from verse 1 to 3. But there was false prophets. That's what the scripture says. Second Peter chapter 2, I am reading from verse 1. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall even, I'll take that again, but there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. I'm not stopping there. Look at verse 2. And many shall follow their pernicious way. And by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Hallelujah. Look at verse 3. And through covetousness shall they with faint words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. False prophets. We live in a generation where people have itchy ears. Oh, they want to see the prophecies. Oh, they want to see people who will look at them and tell them their future. <laughs> oh, they want to see that man that will tell them what happened to their forefathers and their grandfathers gone by. They want to see actions. And because of this desperation, the Bible says that you will fall <laughs> into the hands of this man who will make merchandise out of you. We live in a generation now where people charge people for money to pray for them. Where people charge people to pay money for them to prophesy on them. False prophets, wolves in cheap clothing. So they conceal their original agenda. They will draw you close with sweet words. Let me tell you something. That these wolves, they understand the language of the sheep. In other words, they are grounded in the word of God. They are smooth talkers. They know how to preach the gospel as well. And so they get you into their corner until you become very comfortable and then they strike. So number two characteristic, they conceal their original agenda until they have gotten hold of you. And then there's a word that stands out there in that scripture. The Bible says, and many shall follow their pernicious way. Pernicious means having harmful effect in a gradual and subtle way. Remember I told you from the beginning, one of the characteristics of wolves, they don't just attack. They come in looking harmless. These false people we are talking about, they come like they have your interest at heart. And their destruction is always gradual. I know of people here who met people on the line, preachers. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying it's not right. I get blessed by a lot of vessels of God online whom I've never met in person. So don't get me wrong. But I know of people here who met people online in the name of prayer, and before you know it, they are sending dollars of dollars to them. Why? Because it is demanded from them. And you know these people are very difficult to convince, to let them know, look, this is not the right thing to do. But because these wolves have grabbed them into their corner, they have deceived them into a place where they become comfortable, they fall flat 
and these woes as described by the scriptures become ravenous and begin to feed on them. Hallelujah. We are talking about the characteristics of wolves. Number three, they most times have a large crowd believing and following them, which makes it easy for people to fall prey. These wolves that are deceptive, that the Bible describes in Jude, Jude chapter 4, that we, uh, Jude verse 4 that we read, and this second Peter chapter 2 that we read, they have large crowd following them. They have people who believe in them. They have people who can see no wrong in what they do. And so it's easy for innocent sheep to fall prey and to follow them and say he or she must be speaking the truth. That is why people are following them. Don't get me wrong again. I am not saying large following connotes being a fake prophet. I'm just telling you the characteristics, some of the things you will see in these people called wolves. Another characteristic, they appear to know God, but are actually far from God. They appear to be grounded, but they are actually without roots. You know, I don't see much of it in this part of the world, but the part of the world where I come from, there are some rivers or ponds that you will see. You will see plants growing on top of water. Plants, they will be growing on top of water. It looks like they have roots. It looks that they are stable, but you know what? When anything passes in that direction, maybe a cane or something passes in that direction, you will see all the plants floating away. Though they look like real plants, but they have no roots. I can't find the name for those plants right now, but they grow on top of water. They are restless. They are without tap roots. They are without stability. So when anything comes, you see them floating all over the place. But when you are looking at them from afar, they look like they are rooted. It looks this Receptive. So these wolves, they appear to know God, but they actually are far from God. Let's see what the Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 3. Hallelujah. We are talking about the characteristics of wolves. Look at chapter 3 of 2 Timothy. Hallelujah. Chapter 3 of 2 Timothy. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Look at what the Bible says from verse 5. Glory to God. It says, Look at what the Bible says from verse 5. It says, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women, laden with sin, led away with divers lusts. Look at what the Bible says in verse 7. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. These are the people I tell you. They are vast when it comes to the world. <laughs> they could stand and begin to dispense the word of God effortlessly. But the Bible says they have this form of godliness but denying the power thereof. So you have to be alert on the inside. When they do not know God, how do they react in the face of difficulty? How do they react in the face of our time? What are the kind of advice they give to you? I've shared it many times. I was once in a situation going through a difficult relationship and an advice came from a prophet of God. He said, look, if it seems it's not working out, get pregnant for him. When you get pregnant for him, he will have no choice than to allow the marriage to go up. But people of God, is that a godly advice? <laughs> Bible says they have this to appear to know God, but actually far from God. So one of the ways you spot them out, they could tell you God says, they could tell you what the scripture says, but they never act what the scripture says. They never go the way of what the scripture says. They never do the things that God says to do. They are never sensitive to the instruction of God. Look at Gehazi. He 
was not sensitive. So the gifts and all the things that the prophet rejected, he went after them. Well, you know the story better than me. You know what happened to him. Hallelujah. Another point before I wrap up this morning. They appear to be good. They appear to be a sheep. They pretend, but they are wolves. They pretend to be sheep, but they are wolves. That is why you will have people who are murderers, who are thieves, who are fraudulent, who do all kinds of things that should not be named amongst us, who are right with us in the church. I know I'm going to step on some toes. Who are right with us in the church? They are not just with us, my dear brothers and sisters. They are holding positions in the church. They are leading worship on Sunday morning. They are teaching in the Sunday school. They are preaching on top of our pulpits. Wolves in sheep clothing. So they appear to be like sheep. They come around, they know the things that we say, they learn all our slangs and languages. They will prophesy. A lot will even testify of their dead. A lot of people will, will testify of their genuineness. They will come to give testimonies. Oh, so and so person prayed for me and I got healed instantly. Oh, so and so did this and I got healed instantly. You wouldn't say those people are lying. It may be their experiences. But these persons we are talking about, they are far from God himself. I want to wrap up by reading the scripture this morning. That same Matthew chapter 7. But let's look at verse 22. Hallelujah. Look at what he says. He says, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out demons. So this tells me that even these people that know not God, that are false, they could cast out demons. Is that not what the scripture is saying? It says, in thy name we have cast out devils. And in thy name done many wonderful works. Because God will always protect his name. God would not allow his name to be dragged in the mud. And so these people would do these things in the name of the Lord. But yet, the Bible says, I will say to you, I do not know you. So as I wrap up this morning, or whatever time you may be seeing me, I want you to know that there are many good-looking wolves who are dressed in sheep clothing. You must be sensitive and be able to spot them and run for your dear life so that at the end, the name of the Lord alone will be glorified. And until I come back next time, shalom. Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many enter through it, but small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. I am Pastor Bridget Ogbefun, inviting you to join me every Friday at 6 a.m. on the Tobago Inspirational Network for Gateway to Life, where we explore the Word of God through the help of the Spirit of God.